Uh, so I'm Marcel. I'm a front-end lead at the Exceptional Performance team at Yahoo. And I'll be demoing some uh, feature highlights uh, we presented on the last uh, Velocity Online. So as most of you know, uh, Wiselow was developed by Yahoo and Steve Saunders uh, four years ago and became a very popular uh, performance analysis tool. And uh, we reached these nice numbers here. And uh, let me show how it looks like. So most of you are familiar with this tool. So we have some tabs and the grades and some scores for a, a page being analyzed. And uh, recently this year, we also uh, announced a version for Google Chrome. And this is how it looks like in Google Chrome. It's exactly the same experience as in for Firefox. So you pretty much run and you get a grade and a score and we kept the same experiences. So you have components, statistics. Uh, and it's very popular for the uh, performance industry people. And uh, we noticed that most of uh, some UEDs, web, web developers, uh, they're not, they don't even, they haven't heard about Wiselow or another uh, performance analysis tool. And even worse, they don't even know about performance. So we decided to step up and make this tool more uh, social. So we add these buttons here, the social features for uh, Wiselow. So you can share a tweet the results with your followers. Um, you can also share with your friends and face, uh, Facebook. So you can add any feature here. And, and when you go to your Facebook account here, let me see. So this link here backs your uh, redesigned website. So this is our uh, redesigned website. It's uh, online now. And uh, this is a new feature called Wiselow Score Meter. So pretty much allows the user to see how uh, it impacts the, the performance overall. And they can play with the sliders here and see uh, how they can prioritize, uh, you know, how they can attack and fix the, the features. Like in this case here, we analyze Santa Clara uh, City uh, website. and. Let's see, uh, if they turn on compression, let's see what happens. So from D they go to C. And if they fix the um, expiration to, in order to make this page cacheable, so they go to B, which is much better. And fixing the E tags, which is a pretty simple task, it's still B. And let's say they have no money to uh, afford a CDN, so, but they can reduce the number of ATP requests by making sprites or uh, combining CD files. So they can go to A pretty easy. So um, they can uh, read more about all this uh, performance rules here by clicking any of them, go to the performance website where I explain in details how they work and how they fix. And if one is interested in how these rules work and how they are calculated, they can go to this uh, rule set matrix here, which is a table listing all the uh, rules here and how, what they weight and the points used to calculate and how the computations make for each score and how uh, you can uh, fall into any of these uh, scores here for each rule here. So pretty much explain uh, all the possibilities you can uh, get in for all these uh, uh, rules, scores, and the overall uh, grade. So back to the presentation here. On the, during the uh, Velocity Online, we announced the uh, temporary uh, alpha version for uh, mobile. And today, we are officially announcing the beta version. So um, let me show real quick how it works. And here, I have the same website, but this one is uh, optimized for mobile. And uh, Wiselow works as a bookmarklet. So here in my bookmark bar, and also has Steve here. And uh, Wiselow, uh, we kept the same experience for uh, this, uh, you know, for mobile. So you, nothing new here. You just run and get a, um, your grade and score. Um, it, uh, yeah, so we got B for this optimized uh, website here. And you can click and see the details on wh what to fix and go in the components and drill down the, uh, all the components here and see the um, headers.
and so is the statistics. And also the, because um, the same code base, so as assumed the um, social tools here. And when you close, you remove from the, the page, so there's no footprint was always here. Um, we also talk about the um, uh, hard importer on during Velocity Online. And this is now done, but it's not released yet. And we, we're planning to uh, announce in coming months. And I'll show pretty quick how it looks like. So I have some pre-exported uh, hard files. If you're not familiar with hard files or Node.js or JS DOM, that technology used here, uh, yesterday there was some, uh, there were some workshop there talk about this uh, technologies. So I will run Node. This is a Wesel Node.js, and let's see Santa Clara again. So you get the score. Then you can pass a bunch of uh, other websites. You have the hard files for them. Yeah, so back to printing. And so we're planning to release in August this year. And so that's all I have to share with you. And uh, feel free to visit us or like us or follow us. And we have this brand new uh, domain here. And pretty much points you to the developer, yahoo.com slash Wiselow. And feel free to reach me. I will be in the Wiselow booth or around. Thank you. I'm very excited about the uh, bookmarklet uh, to run on mobile devices. One thing I was disappointed about, though, was um, I noticed when you were trying to optimize the page, you stopped at the score of 91. And although that was my strategy all through college, the minimum amount of work to get to 91, I encourage all of us here to go for a 99. So don't stop at 91. Um, so up next, uh, you know, I gave him some shout out yesterday at the Perf Tools workshop, the only person doing a workshop, a plenary talk, and an afternoon session, uh, Pat Meenan, the creator of webpagetest.org, who for the last few months has been uh, over at Google working uh, together with me and on a side project that I'll be showing two demos from now. Please help me welcome Pat Meenan. Thanks, Steve. So I wanted to take a little detour and hopefully teach you some stuff that you haven't been playing with. Hopefully a lot of you are familiar with web page test already. Um, you know, when you take a first look at it, it's your basic. Go there, put in an URL, get some results back. You get all sorts of results. You get grades, you get waterfalls, you get CPU utilization. But single pages are interesting, but that's sort of not where everything's at. And I highly encourage you, if you haven't yet, to explore the advanced tab. Don't get too scared by it. It's not all that. You've got the number of runs and some of that kind of stuff. But the really scary stuff in the script tab, the kind of stuff that I couldn't figure out how to put into the UI, uh, there's a scripting language for web page tests, or actually for the engines behind it, where you can do all sorts of really scary shit. So you can do multi-page multi navigation flows. Uh, we use this uh, for testing things like webmail and mail apps. and shopping cart experiences. And you can do all of the same stuff that you can do with normal web page test, get all the same data back, the visuals, uh, the waterfalls, the CPU utilization, everything else. You can do the content blocking, but you can do it for a navigation path, because let's face it, nothing's ever just a single page view. You can interact with form fields. You can execute arbitrary JavaScript if, for whatever reason, the scripting language can't do what you need. Go ahead and throw in some random JavaScript to do what you need to do. Uh, you can pre-populate session cookies or zip codes and things like that. Um, you can override the user agent string. Um, you want to be a little careful with that, because at least if you're using the IE testers, you are still running an IE browser. So even if you pretend you're like a mobile iPhone, remember IE doesn't necessarily do everything the iPhone does. So you can still get your mobile pages, or you can still get other pages. Uh, just remember that you are still using the engine of the real browser. Uh, you can set any arbitrary HTTP headers, you can override the DNS lookups. So if you want to test your production page, but on your dev box, you can still use your production domains and just reroute it to your dev box. Um, there's a whole bunch of comments on the scripting language. You don't have to worry about remembering that URL. It's actually linked to in the UI. Um, also, feel free to contact me. But 
What I wanted to do here was do a really simple uh, comparison. I buy a lot of computer hardware, probably more than my wife would like. Um, Amazon and Newegg, I frequent you very often. Um, so I wanted to take sort of two basic flows on both of them, go and purchase a hard drive. So visit, take a look at the, the computer hardware, internal hard drives, do a drill down path on both of them. So the script on, so I chart. <laughs> Uh, the script for Amazon, uh, the combined steps command basically says, take all of these and turn it into a single flow. Um, you can also target just a specific part of a flow if you want to measure just one step at the end. Um, but in this case, I wanna compare the full flow of both. And then just a whole bunch of navigations along the path. And the final one is to add to the shopping cart. There's a add to cart button that you can click on. On the new egg, um, you can also, same navigation path, but at the end, it's uh, the new egg button. When you click on it, it actually does a JavaScript on click call. Uh, figured, hey, let's go ahead and just execute their JavaScript directly. So you go ahead, when you go to submit the test, um, I usually like typing it up in an editor because typing it online in the, in the little tiny box in the web UI is kind of a pain in the ass. So type it in in something else, paste it in. Make sure you give it a label. On the first tab, you can label your tests. Um, it really helps when you go back and you want to try and remember exactly what you were doing, especially if you were doing content blocking or something fancier, to know, oh, that's the test where I was blocking the JavaScript. Um, and then after you run both tests, you can go ahead and compare them. And in this case, you, get, you can go and get the visual comparison, and you can go down to 100 millisecond frame by frame and go, Okay, so Amazon started loading first, and then it went to the next step, and work through and see exactly what the process was along the path. And then go ahead and generate your favorite video. Let's go ahead and make that full screen to show off to the marketing guys or the boss and say, hey, we made great progress. We're faster now for this step. Or you can see sort of as you're going through the shopping cart, Amazon, it's starting to pull a little bit ahead, and it starts to pull further and further ahead. Oh, Newegg has that big giant graphic. And then Amazon's ahead. We're, on, we're finally ready to buy the hard drive. And remember, it, it's testing what you tell it to test. So there's possible the, the reviews and stuff at the bottom on the actual product page caused Amazon to take a little longer there. And then you have it in your shopping cart. They ended up, Newegg catch, caught up at the end. Um, and that's the main part. Hopefully I wanted to whet your appetite for sort of some of the more advanced stuff you can do beyond just URL testing. We'll also, in here, well, not in here, in EFGH at 455, I'll be doing sort of the big, what's changed in the last year. There's been a whole lot of stuff, a bunch of API stuff I want to introduce you to, get you exploring more, sort of the guts, what you can do with web page test as a platform. And we've got a whole bunch of really cool code talks going on in the Google booth during all of the breaks where the engineers that work on a lot of this stuff will be there doing presentations and answering questions. I'll be there at 3.30 with Sadish, one of the other guys working on web page tests right now. And we'll be doing a logged in script where we go into an authenticated site so you can see how you do an authentication. And we'll also be doing some content blocking, showing you how to block uh, third party widgets and see how your page looks with and without them. And tomorrow, one of the other guys working on the team will be in at 10 o'clock, uh, Steve Lamb, and we'll be talking about web page replay, which is something else that they released as part of what they were working on with Chrome. And that was it for me. I've used web page test a lot, but I have to admit I haven't taken advantage of the scripting capabilities. Um, so that looks very cool. Uh, so up next is Dave Johnson from Natobi, and I won't uh, say the name of what he's going to demo in case he wants to take advantage of the cheap humor you can get out of that. And I just asked him, and uh, he may not be around that much this afternoon. So Natobi's the phone gap company. So if you have any questions about phone gap, uh, grab uh, Dave before he gets out of here today. Grab him at the next break and ask him questions. And I'm very amazed at how the presenters are staying on time. I have no idea how Dave is going to do that because a remote debugging session with a live device in under seven minutes is going to be tough. But please uh, help me welcome Dave Johnson. All right. 
Thanks very much, Steve. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm going to get right into it, because like Steve said, it's kind of difficult to show this in seven minutes. So what I'm going to be showing you is something called Web Inspector Remote, uh, essentially for remote debugging uh, for mobile phones. Anyone here used Firebug before? Oh, yeah, that's strange, right? So essentially, it's like Firebug, or in fact, it's more like web developer tools for WebKit, but for doing it on mobile. Uh, again, as Steve alluded to, it, uh, the actual name is Winery. That's all. Uh, it's created by this guy. He's totally awesome, Patrick Mueller, who works at IBM, uh, wrote the whole thing, and it's absolutely amazing. And he's contributed it to the PhoneGap uh, mobile phone platform uh, development framework. So essentially, like I said, it's uh, using the WebKit developer tools to inspect code that's running on your actual device. So this is what WebKit uh, web developer tools look like, of course. Has a server that you run on your computer or on a server wherever you like. It's uh, currently a Jetty server. You have a little script, looks like this. You put that into your web page or your PhoneGap application if you like. And so that references back to the server where, you where you're running the Jetty server. And I'm going to go back and not thank you yet. And uh, we're going to go to a quick demo right now. OK. So can we see that up there very well? Sure. That looks a bit better. Well, I better do this over here. Don't want you guys to see my uh, code here. OK. So there's my beautiful daughter. I'm going to go into uh, command line here. First thing, we're going to run that uh, Java server. So we're going to start that running. I've got a little bookmark on my Android phone here. I just clicked on the bookmark. Brings up this. This is the main screen of Winery when you load it up. So you can see there, this is just running in the browser. It's referencing the IP of uh, my laptop here. I'm going to click on the target demo. This is just a sample page. Inside of this page, it has the script that I mentioned before. It's included in this page. So it's, that script is referencing back to my server as well. And now I'm going to go on my computer and inside Safari, this also works in Chrome. I'm going to go to my debug server. And here you can see this is the default uh, page you have. You have the client. That's what my computer or my, uh, my browser on my computer is going to be. We have uh, the demo app, which I just loaded up on my phone. And so this is the URL for the target script in this case. You could also add it as a bookmark that if you wanted, um, and some other details about that. So I'm going to just go and click on my client. And so that takes me there. And I'm going to go actually and all right, there we go. So this is the first page that you see when you're using Web Inspector Remote. Uh, this indicates all the targets, which are your mobile phones that are connected. So you could uh, have multiple mobile phones running, and you could choose the one that you want to debug. So you could have a BlackBerry, uh, an Android, an iOS device connected, and debug them all at once. Uh, this is my client. So that's my actual uh, WebKit on my computer here, and some other random details. So up here, you'll see stuff that looks very similar to Web Inspector. That's because the code that's running this is actually JavaScript, which runs uh, Web Inspector in WebKit. And so what Patrick's done is actually pulled that JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and he's just actually running that in here as a web page. So if I go to my develop here, I can actually show, uh, show the real Web Inspector on top of our Web Inspector that we've actually just inserted in there. So we can ignore that, though. OK, here's where the cool part starts. Click on Elements, and what do we see here? We see a whole bunch of HTML elements. Notice as I mouse over these, it actually highlights on my device. Yes, somebody clapped. <laughs> wow. OK, so we can do everything you would expect you can do in Web Inspector. We can change this to FooBar, and it updates right on my device right there, live for you. Uh, we can go and add styles. We can change this color to yellow. Oh, yeah, that worked anyway. Awesome. It even fixes your bugs for you. Um, and you can also go and check out all of your computer styles, uh, check out your metrics. And why are my metrics coming up for that guy? Metrics should come up anyhow. That's one of the coolest parts, actually. So it actually shows you the layout of your elements and everything, all of your padding and your margins and so on. Uh, I'm going to quickly jump to the console then so everyone knows the console. So here we can actually execute script in the actual uh, browser on our page here. 
and it seems like maybe it's disconnected, it has. So this could be a problem sometimes, especially when you're doing live demos, of course. And if we refresh this all, we should hopefully get it reconnected again. And if not, I've got a video ready for you. All right. Stop. Let's try that one more time. We can see there it's still loading. Oh, my time's ticking away, so I'm just going to jump to my video then instead. Go to my. All right. So, good thing I made this up. Uh, go full screen that. So, again, here, uh, I'm just going to scrub through really quick some of these features I already showed you. So, the elements, we can see that even looks better now because it's a bit brighter. Uh, we can edit all that. So, here's the metrics. You can actually see it down there. Uh, we can go to then the console. So I type in alert foo, it alerts it on your device. So that JavaScript is actually running in your device. Uh, we can actually access document body in your HTML. We can uh, get that first header link or the header tag, and we can change the inner HTML of that if we want. Uh, that some of the other things that we can do here are uh, so I clicked on the start stuff, and that's actually doing timers, um, setting stuff, actually, console.logs right there you can see. That's also doing stuff, and you can actually record the timeline. So you can actually look at XHRs, uh, timeouts, and mark timeline calls to console. So that's actually super cool stuff right there. So you can actually look at the details of those set timeouts, um, XHRs, and your mark timelines. And then you can also go and look at the resources. So here you can actually look at your local storage and session storage. You can go and edit those values, and they'll be updated on your device. And uh, I think that's uh, about it. That's all. all right. Thanks very much. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Dave. So now I'm in the uh, awkward position of introducing myself and constraining myself to seven minutes of demo time. So we'll see how that goes. And we're going to stay, oh, okay, we're going to stay on Wi-Fi? Ooh, ah, okay, we'll see how that goes. Dave, are you on Wi-Fi? No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I wanted to give a quick demo of the HTTP archive and then make a couple of announcements. So how many people here have looked at the HTTP, HTTP archive? So quite a few, but not that many. So I'm glad that I'm taking time to show this off. Um, so I started this project in October of last year, and I showed the first couple uh, runs to people, and they said, oh, well, you need trending data. And I was like, well, yeah, but it just started. We'll get trending data over time. And they, everyone said that. So then I, I basically uh, put it into stealth mode for six months, and in March uh, announced it. And what I'm doing with Pat's help, and to reinforce how much Pat is, I'm, I'm doing this on top of Pat's shoulders. I'm using his laptop to demo it. Um, using webpagetest.org in a batch mode, uh, using the, the batch API, we're running uh, thousands of sites through web page tests, and then I collect the data as part of the HTTP archive and parse out the HAR files and put it into a MySQL database so that we can get aggregate stats on that. So uh, what does that help us do? So we can, we can get these kind of interesting stats like this. This is the stats page. And we can see things like total number of bytes downloaded. The thing that I like to do um, here is use this compare to runs feature. And so um, I do it on the 1st and 15th of the month. That's my new schedule. So we have a run going right now as I speak. Um, and I'll pick the top 100 URLs according to Alexa. And we'll compare those to the top 1,000. And this is kind of interesting in a sad, disappointing way um, about just how among the top 100 to top 1,000, some of the performance metrics drop off so quickly, right? So if we look, total size of page um, goes from 437K to 690K. 
Um, and then let's look at some other things. Uh, so this is kind of interesting, not so much from a performance perspective, but we can see like the adoption of jQuery and Google Analytics is much lower in the top 100 than in the top 1,000. And that kind of makes sense. You figure these top 100 companies are probably building their own stuff more and more. Um, and so let's see, I wanted to skip down to, we have things like uh, most JavaScript, most CSS, errors, Flash. So this is interesting. Um, and to me, a you know, kind of positive thing is in the top 100 sites that are more highly tuned, we see a lower use of Flash in websites, 36% uh, compared to 50%. And this one is uh, the sad one. In uh, the top 100, 26% of resources have no caching headers. So like we're not taking advantage of the cache for 26%. But in the top 1,000, that jumps to 40% of resource requests have no caching headers. So that's disappointing. We'd like to see greater caching there. And the last one I want to show here is redirects, which of course are painful and slow down the page. And the, use, uh, the number of pages, percentage of pages with at least one redirect is 54% in the top 100 and jumps to 65% in the top 1,000. So um, let's see, boom. I haven't used the Windows laptop in a while. So in addition to these interesting stats are trends and um, what I always do here to get a real apples to apples comparison is I click on intersection. And what this does is it basically just does a join across all the runs and find the exact number of URLs that are in every single run. Um, and so it turns out across all the runs, there's 14,451 URLs that are in every run. And uh, the scary thing here is um, since November, um, the size, the total size of the number of bytes downloaded has grown by about 60K, um, which is about 10%. And if we look further, um, we can see that uh, that's mostly from images. Let me jump down to images. So here we see that uh, there's only three more images uh, during that same time period, but the number of bytes uh, of total image downloads has jumped by 50K. Um, so I haven't investigated that further. Is this, um, you know, larger images? Are the images that are being added larger than average JPEG sizes? Because J JPEG tends to be the largest. But um, that's an interesting stat. And we can also see some, uh, again, kind of nice stats about flash usage and size dropping off. And I wanted to mention, uh, if you go to the About page, um, you can get lots of, oh, uh, before I jump there, let me go look at, we also have information about individual websites. So I always do AARP because I'm getting old. No, that's not true. It's because it's always on the front because it begins with AA. Okay, both are true. And so we see, um, we see if you're familiar with web page tests, you know, if you saw Pat's demo before, we have the screenshots. You can click through to web page tests and get the videos loading. We also have waterfall charts. You can open the twisties and see all the headers. And we have a page speed report from the HAR file. And we have this huge table that is uh, done so well because I have tremendous UI web design skills. Um, so we have this tremendous table that goes like that and uh, lots of other stuff. And so if you go to the, uh, I'm gonna run out of time here in a minute. Steve's gonna kick my ass. So I gotta get, get done here. Uh, I thought that was funnier than you guys reacted. <laughs> um, so you can go here. Uh, so of course, the project is open source. You can contribute. There's been about five or six contributors so far, so that's very cool. I've been heads down for the last two months, so I haven't taken any patches. Um, but you can contribute. All the data can be downloaded as MySQL dumps. Uh, there's information here about the mission, and that's a good segue into the announcements I wanted to make is I've had this idea of doing this for the last four or five years where I just saw that a large number of websites, even the most popular websites out there, weren't tracking very critical statistics about performance, like the size of JavaScript, the number of, of script requests. And so I wanted to build this, and um, I thought it had a lot of synergy with what the Internet Archive was doing, but kind of you know two sides of the same coin. The Internet Archive is tracking with the Wayback Machine is tracking the content of the web, whereas the HTTP Archive is tracking how that content is built and served. 
And so um, what we wanted to do was, um, you know, we as Pat and I, is grow from right now we're doing about 20,000 URLs every two weeks. I want to grow that to a million in the next six months, and I'm now over time. Um, how are we going to do that? It's going to take a lot of resources. And so I approached Brewster, and uh, we agreed to merge these two projects together. So I'm announcing today that the HTTP archive is becoming a project under the Internet Archive, which, of course, is a nonprofit organization. And so because of that move, we've been able to um, get sponsors to support this growth to a million URLs. And you can see them here, Google, Mozilla, New Relic, O'Reilly, Etsy. Uh, Strange Loop and Dynatrace are all sponsoring this project, and so thanks to them over the next couple months, uh, and with Pat's help, we'll grow the HTTP archive to a million URLs and get even more coverage on uh, performance statistics for the web. All right, thank you.